Hello and welcome back to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here and today I'm going to be showing you how I painted this um, stormy sky using just one colour, Payne's Grey. It's a seascape um, with a simple beach and a breakwater and just this massive great rain cloud um, with a storm sort of blowing in towards us. This was the photograph that I was inspired by. It's from Pixabay and I shall leave a link um, in the description below to the photograph should you wish to have a go at painting it. As you can see, the photograph is a black and white one, which is what made me think it would be ideal just to use as a practice piece um, using just one colour and seeing if we can get the full range of values from it and create a sort of an atmospheric and evocative seascape just using Payne's Grey. So the first thing I'm going to do is simply draw it out. I'm going to put in a quite a low horizon line and then I'm going to draw in the breakwater. Um, lightly in pencil first and just a few sort of guidelines for the beach. I've time-lapsed this because this can take a little while getting it right. And then once I've got the pencil lines where I want them in this simple scene, I've simply drawn over my pencil drawing with waterproof fine liners. I like Faber-Castell Artist Pit Pens for this. They're waterproof, they come in a good range of nibs, uh, but you can get all kinds of other brands of waterproof fine liners. I'm just making a few changes to the shape of the breakwater just to make my painting more interesting. Remember, you don't have to be a slave to the photograph. You can uh, just make any changes you want using your artistic license to make a more pleasing composition or to balance things out a little better. I'm going to be using the wet in wet method to start with and I want to paint a really dramatic yet very simple sky. I don't want it to be overworked, I want it to be as simple as I can get it. So I'm going to wet the sky all over, stopping at the horizon um, and just focus on painting the sky to start with. This is a large wash brush. Use any large wash brush that you like but a big brush is important to keep the brushwork really simple. Mine's a Princeton Aqua Elite one and a half inch synthetic mottler brush. My board is at an angle of about 20 degrees. So the water, the clean water is sort of running down the page a bit. So I'm mopping up any spare that's pooling up across the horizon line just to make sure that the page is evenly wet. I've got Milford 100% cotton watercolour paper and it's taped to my board with ordinary de decorator's masking tape. I don't pre-stretch my paper, it will buckle a bit as I paint, but then as it dries naturally, it will flatten. Now here's my really rich tube consistency Payne's Grey. I want it really dark across the top because the page is wet, so the paint will diffuse and run down the page a bit, but it will also lighten as it dries. Payne's Grey dries quite a lot lighter, but I want this nice dramatic dark cloud. I've cleaned off my brush a bit to remove the heavy paint, so I've only got a little bit of paler Payne's Grey, so I'm introducing that paler sky just below this big cloud. And once I've um, got that looking the way I want it to, then I can create my distant rain cloud. It's the rain just streaming down in that way that's so evocative from a distance. I'm using a misting spray. This is just an ordinary hairdresser's misting spray that I found on eBay. And I'm lightly spraying the heaviest part of the paint. And you can see that gravity is now pulling down that extra water and paint and we're getting a really nice sort of storm starting to develop and because the page is dry across the sea um, this cloud is stopping at the horizon and I can just mop up any um, extra water that's running down keeping an eye on it you can see that slowly but surely the rest of the um, storm cloud is running down to meet the horizon line which I can just keep cleaning up and I can pull a bit of um, that paint across the water now if I want to. 
just being patient now and just allowing gravity to do what it does. And then as soon as the storm is looking how you want it to, lay the board flat. And that means that the cloud won't move anymore because now that it's flat, it won't run down the page. And the storm should stay and dry a little bit lighter, but pretty much stay where the paint is. And I'm now using the tips of the flat brush to drag some pale paint across the sea, making sure that I leave some light areas of unpainted paper around the tide line so that I can just suggest a little bit of white water, a little bit of surf without having to overtly paint it. I'm trying to keep this as loose as possible with as few brush strokes as possible and so I'm trying to just create maximum effect with minimum brushwork here. Taking some much richer colour, sweeping it across the beach but again skimming across the texture of the paper in places because it's cold pressed paper so there's a bit of a texture and that gives me a bit of dry brush. Again this will add variety to my beach. The structure of my painting is still very apparent from the line work that I put in with the fine liners at the beginning. So all I'm doing really is working around that with my paint just to enhance the drawing that's already there. The sharp eyed among you may have spotted right in the middle of the sky a pale dot where I got a splash of um, water must have come out of my water mister onto the wash there and that looks quite interesting we'll see how it dries it may dry looking like a sort of pale sliver of sort of sun just sort of peeping through the misty clouds or it may just disappear as it dries and now I'm going to let it dry don't worry if this doesn't work out for you first time. This is a technique that looks quite simple and it is simple, but simplicity takes practice. It takes sort of getting it wrong a few times before you begin to understand how paint, paper, gravity and water react together. But it can be very satisfying when you begin to work those things out and see the relationship between them all and then begin to bring that to bear in your own painting. It's certainly worth putting in the work because watercolour is absolutely wonderful when it behaves like this. I'm really, really pleased with the way the sky has turned out. It's exactly how I wanted it to in this kind of simple but dramatic single colour effect. And I'm now just painting across the horizon line um, wet onto the dry painting to darken up the sea in places. I started off with a size 14 round brush. Now I'm using a flat brush to sort of feather that colour out so that it just gently diffuses into um, the colour that's already there from the wet in wet wash. And I can leave some of the paler colour showing through. It's very important that I use only horizontal brush strokes here and that will keep the water nice and flat and still I want to keep the unpainted areas of white around the tide line and the shoreline which will sort of suggest the surf and while the darker marks suggest the seaweed that's kind of that's um, been brought up and created this tide line Seaweed will also give us that sense of perspective leading back across the painting. So building up the tonal values across the beach, getting a little bit of shadow underneath the um, breakwater, and then using really rich paint across the foreground, I can sort of frame the painting off and sort of balance up that really dark sky. Notice my brush strokes go over the tape. That means that I get a really nice flowing um, finish to the painting so that once the um, tape is removed, then the scene looks more complete. If I make my brush strokes stop just by the tape, then my brush stroke is more stunted and less loose. Making sure I really darken up across the beach.
and then I can go in with my palette knife and just see if I can get a little bit of texture scraped through the paint in places. But I think that's almost done now. A simple approach, but as I said earlier, it's one that needs practice and simple things often are deceptively simple. Um, watercolour painting is certainly not an easy option. It's one of the hardest ways of painting because we don't get the sort of the chance to um, cover up mistakes with opaque paint. With this transparent medium, it takes a little bit more practice to get used to it, but it's certainly worth the effort. So I'm going to remove the tape and let's have a look at it and see how it looks. Hope you can see what I mean about taking my brush strokes off across the tape, which is what gives this sky such a sort of dynamic look. Now, I don't think you can get much more simple than this, but remember, simple doesn't equate to easy. If anything creative like this or any skill was easy, it wouldn't be as much fun um, to learn and, and to become sort of a little bit more accomplished and proficient at it. So don't worry if this doesn't come together straight away. If you try something like this, um, it needs plenty of work learning to control the water in your paper, the amount of water and paint in your paint mixtures, um, the kind of brush strokes that you use. But it's well worth um, playing around with something like this and practicing. And because this is a line and wash, the drawing at the beginning is very simple, but it gives this structure to start with. And that's what makes it such a nice beginner's tutorial. And it's a great way to learn about the way water, paint, gravity and paper all behave on the page. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, please let me know what you think in the comments. I love to read your comments. And um, please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And if you would like to support this channel, then there is a super thanks button below, or you can join us on Patreon. The link is in the description below. Many thanks again, and many thanks to everybody that supports us on Patreon. And that helps us to continue to make these videos and show you them free on YouTube. Many thanks, take care and happy painting. Bye.